Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and welcome back to my meadow. This is video number two in my series about how I am doing hurricane preparation here in my Northeast Florida garden. If you haven't watched the first video, you may want to go back and watch it for a super quick explanation of the four steps that I am taking to prepare my garden. In this video, we're going to talk about step number one, which is the survey. We're going to walk around the garden and take a look at the things that may be affected by heavy rain, strong winds, or rising water. And I've even made a map of my garden so I can take some notes so when I come back around to do the actual work, I'll know what I need to prepare for each area. So let's go take a look around. Since I am the primary gardener out here, I kind of know where I've sort of tucked all my stuff away but I thought it would be helpful for you all to walk around with me and sort of see the things that I see that I know in strong winds or heavy rains could become a nuisance to my neighbor or pollution in the creek and I don't want that. Starting over here I have my potting bench and all my seedlings and the stuff I had ready for starting some fall planting. I mean who am I kidding that's probably been sitting there since spring but that kind of stuff will blow away in a heartbeat. And so I definitely have to do something about that. As we come down here, I'm not too worried about the cedar bed, but the okra is pretty tall. I may need to find a way to secure the okra. The bananas are very tall and I have two racks of bananas on there. So I'm going to have some decisions to make about how I'm going to secure that and if I need to harvest those bananas before the hurricane arrives. There's the water tanks. I know that the covers aren't strapped on so I need to take care of that. And I may even try to put those drain holes I talked about in one of my other videos. We've got a trellis here I could blow away. Another one here as well. While no one can prepare for every possible scenario, I'm really just looking at this again for things that could be affected by heavy rain or strong winds or rising water. If we had an extreme event like a tornado spinoff, obviously some of the things I'm going to choose to do won't be enough and there's just nothing I can do about that. I have to focus on the things that are within my control, which means surveying and making the best decisions for each part of my garden that I can. The zinnia have seen better days and as a part of getting ready, I'll go ahead and clean those up so they don't get knocked over and blown down the street. And of the trellises, this is the one that is probably going to meet its fate if we have a lot of strong wind and there may not be anything that I can do about it. I'll just have to deal with it and clean up the debris once the storm has passed. This okra over here too is also very tall, more than 10 feet tall. I may see if I can get a cord or a rope around the tops of it to just sort of pull it all together to keep it from bending over and whipping around during the storm. I'm going to take a look at the figs as well and see if there's any way that I can help them. Over on this other side I have some trellises that are sort of semi out of commission and so it probably would be best to put those inside storage so that I don't have to worry about them blowing away. This cattle panel is pinned to the T-post and because it has such big holes through it, I'm not terribly worried about that getting blown over or the one that's down in between the two beds. The avocado tree maybe could use a little bit of pruning to sort of get the whippy ends off. I'll take a look at that. The other thing I look at is decor and something that I remember from a prior storm, we had a branch come down and knock off and break one of these mason jar lanterns that we have hanging out here. So right before the storm, 
arrives, I will come out and I will collect all of these because I don't want broken glass out in the meadow. All of Orchard Row, where they're all in pots, I don't really want to move any of them, even though they would probably do better if I could pull them together. Many of them have put roots into the ground, and when I start moving them around, it makes their hearts break. <laughs> and I don't want to break their hearts. So I have to make a decision about that too, and I will tell you that by the time I get to the next store or secure videos. The smaller one in containers here, I'll need to make a decision about those. As for all of my firewood, it's going to stay right where it is. I think it's going to be fine. I don't expect that we'll have rising water as high as this. And so I'm going to leave it. However, we do have a couple of more hazards down here. These half barrels, I'll need to do something with them to make them not turn into kites. And I have some metal panels back there that need to be laid flat and put some blocks on them. I hope this is helpful kind of seeing things through my eyes, things that need to be handled and taken care of out in the garden. In fact, there's one more area that's probably got my biggest concerns. <laughs> On the patio, I have the green stalk vertical planters, the dragon fruit, I have my big grill, I have some shelves, and for each of those, I have to make a decision. I'm going to find a way to tie down the green stalks, and I'll share that in the secure video, and I'm going to see what I can do for the dragon fruit as well, but neither of those four are things that I can currently take and put back into the garage, so, so I'm going to have to figure out how I help them make it out here on the patio. The other thing I know is up on those shelves up there is I have been collecting tools. I grab one from the garage and I lay it there because it's easier to get back to it. So all of the small pieces that are laying around on the patio, those are definitely going to have to go back into storage in the garage. So that is the survey plan. I've got some notes here on my notebook. I've got some ideas I've shared with you, but I would welcome your sharing any ideas with me about how you might secure or store some of the things that I've shown you here. And be sure to watch out for the next video where I'm going to talk about the storage portion. I'll share with you the things that we've picked up and the things that we've moved indoors so that we can make it safer in our garden and safer for our plants we have here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about what's happening in our garden here, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, my friends, remember to drink plenty of water and wear a high quality sunscreen. Have a fantastic day.